Hey YouTubers, um, in the shop today we have our uh, our generator that we used to have back in the day when we had a race team. Um, this thing's been sitting in the garage. You can tell by the cobwebs. I think the last time we used it was six years ago. So it's been out here, it's been near the door. Not the greatest way, I'll admit it. It was laid up incorrectly. It got buried under some crates and boxes and stuff, and I just, you know, totally forgot we owned it. Uh, this was a Kodiak SGA 2800, 2800 watt um, generator. Uh, it's good for 20 amps at 120 volts. Um, and we used to use this. We used to use this on the uh, on the race team, to power our welders and whatnot during the race car. So what we're going to do, because it's been laid up so long, I'm not even going to pull it over. I'm going to pull the spark plug, which is located right here, and we're going to put some oil in the cylinder, just in case she's been sitting too long. So. one-handed so bear with me and this socket needs to get stuck in here there we go and to back it up a little bit sorry and like I said trying to do this one-handed and these Hondas and this one is GX160 these were fantastic motors. Totally reliable. Holy cow, is it ever stuff to get out. We use these for go-kart racing. Generators, pumps. Uh, motors have been on everything you can well imagine. Sorry. Yeah, I'm working one-handed. Plug out. Come into focus. Here's a shot of the plug. Focus. There we go. That's not bad. No oil. But just surprising because this one had a. It traveled around a lot. And sometimes my guys, the team members, leave the gas turned on. And you knew when you fired it up, it smoked because the gasoline would leak down into the crankcase and mess everything up. So let me put you on pause. And then I'm going to squirt a little bit, get ready to squirt the oil in. So stand by. And we're back. I'm putting my zoom oiler down. And I'm going to give her a bit of oil. And why I'm doing that is I definitely do not like to roll something over with at least not a little bit of oil in it because it's been sitting for like I said about six years it's not stuck at all beautiful put a spark plug on there I don't like pulling them over without something no, let's see. Turn her on. I don't know. Are we going to get spark out of her? See spark in there? I couldn't tell. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there it is. Couldn't tell it first. There you can see it. Lots of spark. That recoil. Okay, can you get me a 10 mil wrench? So. Uh, so we got some oil in the cylinder, and then we're gonna put put the spark plug back in and check the carburetor now. Okay, so we're gonna check the gas tank. Oh, look at that! There's fuel in it. it smells like gasoline. Wow. Check the oil. It's a little bit. What's going on there? And that'll be over full. And the red oil is because that's racing oil. And eh, it's not too bad. We're gonna have a problem here. Hold on, I'll get this cleaned up. So we know we got oil. Now the next thing is gonna be. I'm going to drop the float hole. I got something that resembles gas. It smells like gas. Sorry, I'm focused on the wrong thing. I'm trying to do this one hand. Look at that. Six years. Look at that. Nothing in there. Floats okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fuel on just real quick. See if we get fuel flow. Fuel's on right here. Huh, that might not be good because the fuel is supposed. Oh, there you go. That's fuel on. There's fuel. So we're good. See the fuel float out of there. So we know we got fuel. Um, I don't anticipate anything to be in the air cleaner because uh, we never really got around too much dirt. Although this was a, rear, a rental unit that was uh, picked up, used. Yeah, carburetor. That does have a pre-filter on it. Um, uh, obviously that doesn't look too bad. And that'll have a filter inside of the regular filter. You can't get it to come apart. Just a second. There we go. That's rotten. You can see right away. The oil's destroyed the sponge. It's getting gummy right away. And that's not a regular cartridge. That's a new one on me. And I do believe I have some paper filters in stock. Because we used them. They came out of the go-karts. But this oiled sponge must be because this is commercial duty. So we're going to put that back for now and I can use that for now but I've got the uh, the regular duty ones maybe I'll switch that out um, I know if I clean that sponge that it's not going to be a good day Get her ready to start. Let's see how she runs. I don't know if it'll start with this old. I do not know if it'll start. I got a tripod coming. Uh, Amazon's been good to me during this COVID-19 nonsense. So we'll have that coming. I'm going to try to put the cam my camera phone here, my 
I'm shooting all this on a Galaxy uh, S10 Plus. I got it on a promo at Christmas time. Okay, I'm going to two hand this. Be right back. There we go, I got it started. That was a bit of a pain. These are kind of tucked in under the exhaust. And then the other thing is I'm doing this, videoing it, looking through the camera, and there's a delay. Probably about three quarters of a second. So it's a little bit funky because I think I'm seeing something that I'm not. It's very difficult to see. I'll film this at the same time. So I'm just going to get that tightened in and then the valve covers on these Honda motors stick out a bit so they always rubs on the socket you gotta keep wiggling the socket it's a little bit of a pain so we got that and we'll put Mr. Flow Pole back on Doing all this one hand. It's uh, a little bit of choo tree. He's not going to have to just lost it. Brings back memories working on this old girl. Spent many a, many a years, 19 years at the racetrack. And this thing was all the way, all the way from, with us from junior, junior late model, go-karts, junior late model, all the way up to late model. We're well versed with the Honda engines. I used to build race engines for a lot of go-karts, go 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 uh, different race teams. The uh, the GS 160 GX 200. So it was the 5.5, the six horsepower. Um, and then what about when we got in the J car? Yeah, and then we had the third uh, nine horsepower, which is the GX 270. And then the 13s for the. Now we'll turn the fuel on. That should fill the carburetor. It's been a while since I've seen this. Can you see that? Because I can't see that. Which way is choke open and which way is choke closed? I think that is choke. To that way, fuel to that way. And then uh, plug wire back on. I did oil the cylinder up, so when it fires, it'll probably be smoky. And then I'll hand that off. And then we'll see what happens. This, this is the equipment. Like I said, this isn't that, this isn't that crap that's, uh, look at the dirt. 
that, that stuff from, I shouldn't say crap, but that inexpensive equipment that you see from Harbor Freight or Princess Auto if you're in Canada, the stuff that doesn't run, uh, the stuff that you spend 300 bucks on, and in six months you're complaining because it doesn't run. I don't know what this generator would have been worth brand new, but I'll tell you real quick. It's Kodiak power equipment. Now these guys make pressure washers, so I imagine these are uh, these are these are Honda powered, and I don't know these. I know this is brushless, so this is a brushless uh, generator, and it's Kodiak power equipment. Uh, you can do an online search and figure out who they were, but this was a piece of rental equipment from a defunct rental company but there you saw it it started right up when we do our bug out this piece of equipment will be coming with us it'll be our power to do the things that we need to do and i have ran and the big power outage back in 2000 and i don't know i think it was 2006 maybe we had the big eastern seaboard power outage i ran my house on this believe it or not i was able to run the uh i was able to run uh, the refrigerator and some lighting and we were doing something else anyway uh, it, it did do 20 amps that, that's enough to maintain some stuff and nowadays with LED lighting pff, you won't even see it uh, you know it takes uh, well it, it takes a lot to uh, to lot you can you can run a lot of LED lighting. I don't do the math right now, but you figure it out. Your average LED lights like nine watts at a hundred volts. So I'll do it out. Do Ohm's law. Figure out what the amperage would be, and then you can calculate what your load is. But this will do fine. Any camp we ran a welder with this, uh, we had no issues. No issues at all. It's a it's a great it's a great great generator. And it's not, uh, it's not that white elephant brand, five elephant brand. This is a good unit. And we've had it for quite some time. I think, uh, well, it's going to be 10 years anyway. And uh, there you go. So that's the Kodiak 2800 generator. Now this is an old girl. She's probably 12, 14 years old. But this stuff is out there. So if you can find this used, this is what you're after. This sat six years, fire rate up, and just a quick recap before we even started pulling her over. I oiled the cylinder to, to make sure that the rings weren't dry. I pulled it over quite a few times with the oil in it. We checked for spark, checked for oil. We had spark, we had oil, we checked for gas. The gas is six years old. Uh, it's probably race fuel because that's what we ran in it. Um, so it'd be a high octane fuel. Just it's uh, it's not racing fuel per se. It's what we call the race fuel. Would have been uh, Shell with V Power ninety one that's been sitting in there six years. So I was okay. It doesn't even smell bad. So we know that gas will work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the video. If you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. It was uh, the oil in there was Ams oil. And I believe it was 40 weight. It was a 1540, I believe, race oil. I'm going back a few years. And I know we changed the oil at the track because the gas got left on. We started this thing up. It smoked us out. We shut it off. We changed the oil. That's all we had in the trailer was race oil. So that's the AMS oil, race oil. That's why when it, when you took it out, when I took the plug out, it looked like it was it was red because it has red dye in it and the garage here sits on a, on a pretty good slope so that's why I think when I pulled the uh, the plug out that it poured out a little bit because I'm on a heck of a slope here so that had the AMS oil oil in it I'll change out the oil later we'll get some other oil for it um, that's the uh, that's that that's where we're at now you can see this this thing has not been lolly coddled I rode it hard put it away wet did a real dumb thing, didn't didn't fog the cylinder, didn't dump the gas out of it, didn't do nothing. The way it is is the way I put it away after it last ran. Uh, and that was at the racetrack, I'm going to say the summer of 2013 maybe was the last time we ran it. And that would have done our lighting, our air compressor, 
we got a small air compressor which now is down in the gun shop so um there you are that's uh that's the video the repair video for the day so we took a few precautions got got the old girl running and everything was good so if you come across an older piece of equipment my recommendations are you pull the spark plug right away before you start jerking on it give it a shot of oil in the cylinder so that the rings are lubricated it'll help them unstick faster because their lubrication will be from the top and the bottom and the sooner it unsticks the, le the, the least chance you have of doing any damage to the cylinder the piston the motor will come back to life uh, pulling it over lots get some splash going on without running it so splash the oil around these are splash lubricated uh, you heard it run there's no valve clatter so I'm not going to bother with checking the valves I don't know how many hours on this thing I know we burned at least two or three tanks gas through it but uh, I think what I'll do is I'll get some better some better some proper oil for it change out the oil not to say that the AMS oil uh, racing oil wasn't good but I'll get some AMS oil uh, I think uh I think I might have some 530. I'll put some 530 in there because I believe that's a recommended oil was 5W30. I'll look it up, make sure, and because uh, they don't seem to put a sticker on. And these manufacturers, you know, these things live and die by their oil, and you'd think they would tell you what to do, right? So there you go. This whole generator was made in Japan. So that gives you the idea right there. It's 120 volts. Uh, 2.8 kVA, which is just a crazy way of rating. It's 2,800 watts, so you could do the math. But that's the unit there. We were nothing but happy with it. So any of the homesteaders out there, be careful those junk generators. You're, j I, I, I think you just. I've seen guys going through two or three talking about their homesteading channels. You're going good money after bad. Buy yourself a quality piece of equipment, because like I said, this lay around never got used and she fires right up and she runs i'm i'm totally shocked i don't have any content to give you because it ran so anyway thanks a lot stay safe and uh during this covid di disaster and hopefully we can continue to bring some more repair videos we get into some different stuff um but i just did a quick rundown so i pulled the carb pulled the plug oiled the cylinder pulled her over checked it out put it back together moved some fuel through it and then we fired it up and she was good to go. That's it in a nutshell. That'll that'll get make your determination just about any small engine. Alright, so see you soon. Thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications of a new video. And we'll see you soon. Bye now.